They're coming to get you. They're coming for you, Barbara. They're coming to get you. Coming to get you, Barbara. Welcome back to the Coming to Get You. I'm one of your hosts, Brent Trehune, joined by... Gavin Eddings. And Brent, I don't care if you cover yourself in peanut butter and have a 15-hooker gangbang. <laughs> Well, no, I, I got the peanut butter down for sure. <laughs> and you just need like 14 other people to show up. That's and then, true, yeah. And, and you're good to start this out hot. Well, you know, you and I are sitting here. We've got a dead body between us. Uh, I'm wearing a pig head. You're wearing a black and white or black and red robe alone. I, uh, you first, know, as people are want to do. I'm, I'm on a tricycle. It's too small for me. <laughs> I look ridiculous. <laughs> But today uh, we are talking about Saw. Saw. And before that, actually, Gavin, let's, we never do, uh, we've never actually done like plugs on this show, I don't think. Yeah, let, let's open with some plugs. Uh, for the love of God, uh, go give us positive reviews. And if you don't, you're essentially stealing. <laughs> what... And you wouldn't steal a car. Yeah, you would. And you're not living to your full purpose. If you if you don't go leave us positive reviews on wherever you listen, this podcast will not keep going unless you leave a like. It, it detects <laughs> you personally. Go leave leave a like, leave a review, yeah, on whatever you're listening on Spotify, Apple uh, Podcasts, whatever. Leave us that five star review and uh, really help us grow as people. And contrary to what people believe, I can't. I pay my slumlord and positive uh apple podcast reviews so when you <laughs> really do that you're paying the rent <laughs> it's good exposure it's good exposure and, and gavin you have a youtube channel as well i do have a youtube channel it's called gavin loves horror at the time of this recording i am right there on the brink of applying for monetization so i can make tens of dollars for my content and that's that's the dream right there put all this effort in for two years so that you can finally make three dollars well, I've been monetized video. for quite some time, Gavin, and I, I'll venture to say we're making about the same. So. Yeah, it, yeah. So <laughs> if you want to subscribe to my channel, Gavin Loves Horror, I put this podcast up there on uh, Fridays. And if you want to, if you prefer listening there, you can. So yeah, subscribe to the channel and leave those likes, comments, all the things that everybody asks you to do, but we really do need you to do them, please. Yeah, tell a friend. And uh, we're coming up on October, or uh, I guess at this time in the recording, we are in October. We, yes. We've uh but uh, this is the the season so tell a friend about the podcast because that's yeah. you know everybody's into horror movies in october and i think i've said on this show before nobody cares in april yeah uh, that, in fact they think you're weird so <laughs> but we need you to care year round yes so let's jump into saw then yeah so saw came out in 2004 and really started a new genre of horror which is the torture porn genre which I don't, I, I, I thought that was kind of unfair to call Saw torture porn because the first film is really just more of a crime thriller than an actual horror movie. It's a whodunit. Yes, it, it's a whodunit. And you know Ooh. that we love a good whodunit in these, <laughs> on this podcast. I do enjoy a good whodunit. Like I, 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 you know, cause I'm, it's been a while since I've seen this movie. Of course I know who done it. Yeah, the first time I saw this movie, uh, the big reveal, I was like, "Oh shit, he did it! Who yeah, done it? He did it!" I know, and this is this movie really lends itself to a to a who done it to the the big reveal, because uh, I I feel like this movie, while it's it's good across the board, if they didn't have that big reveal, it it's just not the same, you know. I agree. And I watched this uh, again last night with my girlfriend who had never seen it before. Mm -hmm. And she was very nervous to watch Saw because she had just heard about how gory it was, how mm -hmm. graphic, how gross and mean it was. And I had to explain to her, no, that's more Saw 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Saw 1 is more of really good. Who done it? Who done it? It's, it's a who dat who dat done it <laughs> it's more of a who done it and it's more That's like a movie like i think saw is very much like seven if you like the movie seven yeah you will like saw it's shot pretty much the same way with uh who's doing it twists at the end and she was actually she went in very skeptical that that it was going to be good 
mm-hmm. and she's like that was and then she's like yelling at the tv and i was like okay now she's into it yeah. and she gets it um she was a little disappointed by some of the lack of gore weirdly mm-hmm. enough because <laughs> the whole movie basically builds to the foot scene um, yeah which we'll get to but I really love the Saw series. I saw all of, I've seen all of them, except weirdly enough, I, I didn't see the first one in theaters, mm-hmm. but I saw everyone after it in the theater. When they came out, they came out every Halloween for like six, seven years in a row. And there's just something about going to see a Saw movie and the promotion for a long time was, if it's Halloween, if it's Halloween, it must be Saw. And that's yeah. what, and that really for almost a decade was what Halloween meant to me was seeing the new Saw movie. And, you know, the, I, I think they had Saw, what, one, and then a year later, they had Saw 2, and a year later after that was Saw 3, very much similar to, like, Scream 1 came out, and then less than a year, Scream 2 was already out. Like, yeah. they, they saw a good thing when they had it, and they're like, let's cash in on this. And the Saw movies are very cheap to make, because all you need is some buckets of gore, some unknown actors, put it on the screen, and people will come out in gangbusters to see it. And it's I did not live through the 80s horror boom, nor did you. We, we were born later in the decade. But I felt like this is what it would have been like to live through a new Nightmare on Elm Street every year or a new mm-hmm. Friday the 13th, like getting the next Saw entry. And I remember sometimes when I would see the Saw movies on Halloween where they'd set up for the next one and you're like, oh, can't wait to see how this pays off next year. Yeah. And the, what, the closest thing for us would be the, probably what the Paranormal Activity movies. Yeah, because Paranormal Activity started coming out. That was every... a phenomenon in its own right. Yeah, because uh, Saw was early 2000s, and then 2009, Paranormal Activity and Saw 6 actually were going head-to-head. Okay. And people had kind of already starting to move away from the torture porn genre because Hostel came in and like changed the game and took what Saw did and made it like so much worse somehow. Yeah. The Hostel movies were just very gory, not a lot of not not a lot of tact with mm-hmm. those films so people were already kind of moving away from the torture porn genre when paranormal activity hit the screens well i just googled torture porn and uh i actually if you believe it or not real porn shows up so i can't believe that do you <laughs> did, did somebody disable your net nanny uh yeah it was me uh <laughs> Well, I'm trying to think of what what else in the in the horror genre was horror porn because you've got Saw, you've got Hostel. Uh, it says the Hills Have Eyes. That Hills Have Eyes remake was pretty torture porny. House of One Thousand Corpses. <laughs> I don't think I don't really see that as torture. That porn. That's just gory. Yeah. That it was. It wasn't like a lot of torture in that. You know. Yeah, and that actually predates Saw by about a year or two. Mm-hmm. And I think Devil's Rejects could be more considered torture porn if you wanted to wanted to get, get into it because it's yeah. very mean spirited. But you when say I say audition, wanna... that's that, that's uh, not even. I, I think that came out long before. Yeah, I think that came out around the same time. That's the Japanese movie that like Quentin Tarantino was like, "Oh, you got to see this." And yeah, in 1999. Okay, yeah, so that's like five years before. Yeah. Audition's fine. I don't, I mean, it all builds up to one thing. If, if you know what it's building to, then it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, the biggest uh, flag bearers for torture porn horror are Saw and Hostel. There's The Collector. I could see that. I like The Collector. Uh, I Spit on Your Grave. I've never seen that. The remake is very, very violent and mean-spirited. It, it's, it's a rape revenge movie. Yeah, I tend to not, if I know it's a rapey movie, I tend to steer away from that. It's very weird because I do the same thing. I can watch people get their heads cut off all day, but like anything with sexual assault makes me so uncomfortable that I don't. Once that happens in a movie, it's very hard to do because it's very much, a lot of time it's not done very artsy or very well. Yeah, it's not fun. Yeah, the only rape revenge movie I actually enjoyed and thought was very well done was the movie called Revenge. Oh, on Shudder. Yeah, that's a very good one. Uh, So I get, I mean, when you say torture porn, there's not a lot of entries. There are a lot of entries, but there's not a lot of other examples besides the two (laughs) franchises. And one's only three movies deep, Hostel, right? Yes, Hostel three movies deep. But now we're up to nine Saw movies. You That's have, why I googled before we turned the mics on. I was like, "There's a lot of these. I wonder how many." 
Yeah. So yeah, you had the first Saw series, which was like the first seven that came out seven years in a row. Then in 2017, after like a seven or eight year hiatus, they had Jigsaw mm-hmm. come out. And then Which they, that's actually a prequel, right? Yeah, Jigsaw is the prequel. Which I think is a spoiler. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Jigsaw is a prequel. Yeah. And then you had Spiral from the Book of Saw, which is like the weird Chris Rock, Samuel L. Jackson, which yeah. was just a very weird entry. But it all started with 2004 Saw, a very low budget movie from Lee Wanell and James Wan. And what, how is, how are you exposed to Saw for the first time? Uh, didn't know the the twist and I and I've seen all of them but I I really couldn't tell you what happens and what I you know I as soon as I watched saw one last night and saw two was on the same DVD blu-ray so I just started playing it and I was like oh I think this is one with a needle pit I, yes. I think they come down to what's the big torture thing because one of them they have like a a shotgun merry-go-round with uh, Eddie Winslow from uh, <laughs> yeah and that saw six yeah see that I don't and I know that and I'm like and then one of the Baldwins I think is standing on a block of ice there's another <laughs> one like That's I a, like I the think, franchise but I can't tell you what's what is, is it a Wahlberg or an or I think it's a Wahlberg isn't it or the other guy I don't know there's yeah a, there's a Wahlberg in a lot of them <laughs> yeah so i think the first three are very good though that's kind of like considered the trilogy yeah uh, two is my personal favorite mm-hmm. i think two is, is the best i think it just really takes things to, to the next step but yeah once you get like four five and six i know that um scott patterson from gilmore girls is in there a few mm-hmm. times uh, which I met him. He was very nice. He was yeah. at a horror convention. And I was like, wait, why are you? Because I met him for Gilmore Girls because I love me some Gilmore Girls. Hey, who doesn't? I've never seen it, but who doesn't? <laughs> but uh, then I was like, oh, he's signing Saw shit because he was also in Saw yeah. 4 and 5. I was like, that's, you get that sure. money, Scott Patterson. Well, Chester sure, Bennington from Lincoln Park is in one of them at the beginning. Yeah, he's like uh, super glued to a car. Yeah, where it's like, and I knew I didn't know anything about it. I was like, is that the guy from Lincoln Park in this movie? <laughs> um, he has to crawl in his skin, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. So uh, I, I do love the Saw series, but what I love about this first original entry is that the traps are plausible and like a, like somebody could put them together realistically. Yeah, uh, especially a guy with cancer. A guy with cancer. Uh, spoilers, by the way. Uh, John Kramer is Jigsaw, um, <laughs> and, and it's, it's even stated in the first one that he has cancer. Or he's sick, at least, right? Yeah, he because Doctor Gordon, I believe, is like an oncologist of some sort. So okay. he, so it, it, he is established as having some sort of brain cancer. Okay. It comes into play later in the films, but yes, he is established as having that. But I like that this isn't uh, that the traps in Saw One aren't something that you would need 15 contractors to come and weld and build. And like, yeah, a, I don't know what John Kramer does for a living outside of the, but he's supposed to have all this real estate property somewhere. Uh, warehouses and knows how to weld. Yeah. And is what a great pre planner. Yeah. He's got a really good plan. Uh, but the first saw movie, very simple premise. Two people wake up chained to pipes in a bathroom Mm -hmm. and they got to figure out like what's going on uh and it could be you know there are flashbacks and and stuff but this almost could be a play you could do a saw version of the play you know i would watch a musical version of saw i would (laughs) i would love that i'm chained to the bathtub you chained me the the saw (laughs) the saw x marks the spot turn off the lights (laughs) Um, yeah, just two guys in a, in a bathroom and, uh, the dirtiest, shittiest looking bathroom. And do you think like Jigsaw, John Kramer is like, so into the details that he's painting the shit on the walls? Oh, he is 100%. Before he laid down on that floor, he's like, ah, I gotta, I gotta be laying here for a while. I can't have no poop backed up. He's like, (laughs) he's like, uh, Bob Ross with that the palette thing of paint but it's all just shades of brown <laughs> <laughs> oh this is a good one this is good and then you just, just got a little up here, here and just smack the devil out of it happy little <laughs> turds <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah he, he does a lot of stuff like somebody had to paint shit in a heart shape on that toilet on thing. the toilet yeah yeah like he, that doesn't occur naturally in nature <laughs> Uh, yeah, just you would never want to like touch the. I don't want to touch the floors of clean bathrooms, let alone wake up on the floor chained to one, a Isn't dirty it, one. So it's supposed to be like an industrial bathroom. I am just very confused as to what it's used for. Why is there a bathtub and a urinal? Yeah, and it's it's very. I don't know if he contracted out. He's like, I need a bathroom yeah. <laughs> with, with these very specific specifications. This would be on Zillow of like normal room, normal room, urinal with a big bathroom and a <laughs> toilet, and, but right next to the tub. Like, uh, and I, I will say this movie is, uh, it's not 100% windowless. But man, are there no windows in this movie? Pretty much. It's a ve- see. I watched the DVD because I didn't have it on Blu-ray, and it wasn't streaming anywhere for it's free. It's dark. It's a very dark, grainy movie, and I feel like watching it on. It's it's real fun to go back and watch a movie from 2004 on a PlayStation Five <laughs> Blu-ray player <laughs> because it's like this looks really, really shitty. I feel like this is what the director intended to yeah. intended. It's a very dark movie. It's got that, and it's not as bad in this one, but later on. The Saw movies are green. They have a green yeah. tint the whole time. So if you don't like seeing a sickly green glow like you're in the Matrix, th- this is not the series What's for you. What's wrong with Donnie Wahlberg? He's sick. <laughs> but uh, we, have the t- we have the two main characters of Dr. Gordon and Adam. Uh, Dr. Gordon is a doctor. Adam is just some guy who woke up in the bathroom with him. And Dirtbag Peter Parker. <laughs> Is that what you wrote down? You're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, did uh, Danny give me pictures like... of Carrie Elwes? <laughs> <laughs> so, where do you want to start with this? Where do you want to kind of dive in? So, we, we have them waking up in the bathroom, yeah. I and it's it's one of those where from the jump, you're you're also like, how did they get there? Because they're both thinking of the same thing. And then, you know, it, the mystery unravels itself uh, over the 90 minutes or however long this movie is. But at first, it's just like, oh, you're kind of intrigued right away. Dead guy in a pool of blood right in the middle. And these guys are waking up having no memory of, of being there. I do like how they can't remember anything until like halfway through the movie when they're like, I remember now. Yeah. It's like, I think he, I think I would remember the last thing I did before I woke up in a tub. Yeah, or before I saw a, a guy bike. in a pig mask. <laughs> Be like, was there a guy with a pig mask? I can't, <laughs> I can't recall. I went home to my apartment and there was a pig mask. <laughs> well, and also pretty soon in the movie, we were introduced to Danny Glover. Who has never come back for a sequel. He is the only, like, no flashback, nothing. Danny Glover, this was really, I, I don't, this, this is going to be mean. I feel like Danny Glover was at his lowest when, when he signed on to do Saw. He's like, I'm doing this new movie called Paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I read that him, uh, he, and I, th- I guess it would have been the mom, I don't remember her name now, shot their parts in one day. Like maybe not the same day, but he shot his parts in a day and she shot her parts in a day. Because this total, this movie, they shot in 18 days. Which is a very, very quick turnaround time for a movie. Because a lot of movies. Yeah, for anything. Yeah, just 18 days straight through. I love, I didn't know he did it. But then when you think about it, it, Danny Glover is not in this movie that much. No, but it's also, he's Danny Glover. So it feels like it raises the bar of the movie. Shawnee Smith is the, the lady. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like that Danny Glover's in this. It does add a little bit of legitimacy to it, so it's not just complete no names. Mm-hmm. But it's all I always forget he's in these because I've seen the sequels probably more than the original just because there's more fun and they're always kind of on. Mm-hmm. So you're always kind of like, oh, Danny Glover is in the first Saw movie. Yeah, well, this is the biggest cast, I think. I, you know, I don't remember all the movies, but that you've got – uh, Carrie Elwes uh, and and Lee Wanell. You've got Danny Glover, Michael Emerson, who is the uh, squirrely ratty. He always plays like a guy that you can't trust. <laughs> and I just know him as uh, Benjamin Linus from Lost. Yes. And, wait, wait, I'm like, where's your balloon, Benjamin yeah. Linus? Where's your balloon? Then you've got uh, the other guy, uh, Ken uh, Lung, I think is how you say his name. 
he was also on Lost, and then also he was Junior Soprano's friend when he was in the like a nursing home. <laughs> so in my head, I I'm like, uh, you know, Carrie Elwes, he's just Robin Hood to me. He's not Princess Bride to me. He's Robin Hood. Yeah, <laughs> I I like that. It was like, well, how many Lost cast members came from Saw? Two at least. <laughs> yeah, uh, was Danny Glover on Lost? I don't think so. I think if it would have gone on long enough, he'd be like, I'm. I'm here for this shit. I'm getting too old for this island. <laughs> my, me and my wife, we're on a hot air balloon. And Benjamin Lyons like, no, that's my story, Danny <laughs> Glover. You can't have that one. And uh, and uh, what's this, Benjamin Linus? I, now I can't, I got to call him by another character's name. Michael Emerson, uh, Zep. He's, you know, throughout the movie, he it looks like he's Jigsaw. Yes. They, they definitely do that misdirect where he is the one who's going to, Who's like doing everything because he actually kidnaps Dr. Gordon's family. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're like, this is a bad dude. This is a real bad guy. And he doesn't seem, I know it's revealed that he's part of the game, yeah. but he's, he, it didn't take much for him to like get on board. I know he has like poison, but he, I don't think he had to do all the stuff. Like Jigsaw wasn't like uh, point a gun to their head and listen to them with a stethoscope. That was yeah. all him. That was just yeah. him. He, he Jigsaw was like, take him hostage. And he's like, I'll do that and more. <laughs> and Jigsaw's like, but you don't have to. He's like, nope. No, I prefer <laughs> it this way. <laughs> I'm going off script. Um, And you've got some of the traps at the beginning. You've got the guy that uh, didn't make it through like the barbed wire. Uh, what, I don't know what cage he's climbing through. It's what, like whatever. a barbed wire maze. And the, the, the traps Jigsaw does, because Jigsaw, technically he's never killed anybody. But it's like, I mean, he is. He's putting these people in these fucking contraptions, okay? Yeah. Like, J- Jigsaw can't go to court and be like, I I just put them in a room with razor wire and told them they had to escape or die. Like, I, but I didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, John Kramer Jigsaw wants people to appreciate their lives because he has cancer and he feels everybody takes their life for granted. And so he, he finds a guy who I guess is rich, but was like cutting himself a little bit or tried to kill himself. So he... <laughs> it's very mean it's like this guy was going through some shit and he's like if you want to live you have to cut yourself again yeah yeah this is not like you know a terminal disease scare this is like cut the key out from this guy's stomach you know (laughs) it's like you there are other ways to achieve the same result you don't have to do it this way it's all about like what will you sacrifice to do and basically this guy has to just crawl through this barbed wire cage thing or else this door will close forever mm-hmm. uh, but it's like i don't know but it didn't because the police eventually found it so yeah. I, I can't remember if he had a poison in his body or if he had to get he's there's a lot of poison in this movie and it's hard to keep track of everybody who's just weirdly poisoned yeah poison that doesn't uh kill you uh right away it takes you know 61 seconds or whatever (laughs) they put on the clock as soon as you wake up you have 61 seconds from when you wake up then the poison's (laughs) like oh shit he's awake gotta get moving 61 seconds from this point at right now and go like it's Uh, uh eventually you're gonna die either way so, so you have that guy in the cage who is just, I like the way it's shot like a Nine Inch Nails music video. I don't, I don't watch too many Nine Inch Nails vi- uh, music videos. Enlighten me, Gavin. Uh, basically, when, when he's trying to like get and like thrash about, it looks like any new metal or Nine Inch Nails music video. Okay. Uh, from like the, the 90s. Like, it's like, is this a, is this Saw or, an, or a video for Orgy? Like, I can't remember. <laughs> is this Blue Monday? We're and watching? if it were Claymation, it would be a tool video. I know. It's like when I heard Schism start playing on Jigsaw's <laughs> voice recorder, I was like, this guy's got some taste. Uh, also, I guess we should mention there's, there's Jigsaw, there's Ben, uh, no, a John John Kramer. But then mm-hmm. you've also got the little doll, which his name's Billy, right? Billy the Puppet, yes. And uh, Billy the Puppet is there. There's two things in this first Saw movie that are the most iconic things from the series. The first is Billy the Puppet, uh, who comes out. He's he's on the tricycle. He's who what uh, who Jigsaw talks through. Yeah, uh, because puppets are always creepy. Uh, Lee Wanell and James Wan actually created the puppet like first before anything mm-hmm. and it's kind of they're like well we have this puppet now so let's like make a horror movie mm-hmm. um, if so, you think I'm a blockhead 
<laughs> You're the one with your hand up my backside. <laughs> and this is actually the origin story of how Jeff Donna Jeff Dunham got so popular. That's true. Uh, although Billy the puppet's not as racial as Jeff Dunham. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. I mean, Jeff. I mean, listen, Jigsaw will kill you, but at least we don't have to hear weird racism from Billy the puppet. That's he's true. He's an ally. He will kill you if you're black, white, Mexican, straight, yeah. gay. He does not care. He just wants you to live your best life. Wouldn't it be weird if, if Billy the puppet was like, we all know Mexicans. And then he just says <laughs> something. You're like, Oh, uh, I, I just wanted this to be, I wanted all people to die, not just the Mexican people. Like, stop being racist. I want to play a game. You know who really controls the media? He's like, <laughs> oh, no, stop, stop. Oh, no, let, let Mr. Goldstein go, Billy. Let him go. <laughs> oh, thank God. Casual racism. Oh, yeah, but but not from Billy the Puppet. That's from Britton Gavin, strictly. That's true. Uh, <laughs> But Billy the Puppet's very famous, and uh, my ex girlfriend, she was really creeped out. Like she could, I, I have a Funko Pop of Billy, and she could like not be around the Funko Pop. I mean, I don't. It's the same way I feel about Chucky. Like I, I he doesn't creep me out. But then again, do, little dolls don't creep me out. You know, unless it's like one of those porcelain dolls that my next door neighbor had no less than uh, three hundred in her living room. They're mm. all and that. that I think maybe one is a little creepy, but when you have 300, somehow their eyes are all fixed on you. Yeah, I don't like the porcelain dolls. Uh, a neighborhood friend uh, growing up, she collected what was called like ugly dolls. And they were just like very unattractive dolls that were very, very creepy. And mm -hmm. I, I never got that. Like, why do you want so much creepy stuff? As somebody who collects horror action figures, like who would want these creepy things around yeah. them constantly? That's like a thing at horror conventions. Somebody will take a doll and rework it. And essentially it's like Sid from Toy Story had made a line of dolls. And I'm like, that really doesn't appeal to me at all. Well, they have the, the line called like living dead dolls where they take. I, and I don't even mean that. That's a yeah. little more commercial uh, yeah commercial than like somebody like burning a half a head it's like if <laughs> ha michael from halloween kills was a baby to halt you know <laughs> uh the the creepiest thing i ever saw at a horror convention was somebody was standing in line and i think some people have some sort of like postpartum depression where they carry around a baby doll to like represent an actual child yeah and somebody, it, it, it's very sad. It's a real condition. I don't want to seem like I'm belittling that. But I saw somebody carrying around like a baby doll that looked like a dead baby. And I was like, this is not okay. Um, I don't like this at all. <laughs> I'm I'm literally meeting somebody who played Jason Voorhees in 20 minutes. And this yeah. is the most horrifying thing I could have seen. I would like this to stop right now. I, I just want my regular killer clowns and murder <laughs> stuff. But this baby that you're stressing out i can't handle it uh the last horror convention i went somebody had like a pair of like albino ferrets in a cage that they were pushing around <laughs> and i don't i don't know that this was part of a booth or a performance i just think they had <laughs> ferrets just their emotional support ferrets yeah like it's it's one of those where you know there's no other reason that guy brought his pets into the uh into public other than the attention yeah, like it's a guy that has a snake. That's like, like it's a, for lack of personality. <laughs> I don't think that guy guy with the ferrets is like, hope nobody asks me about my ferrets. Uh, can... Stop bringing up the ferrets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to enjoy the convention. And yet everybody's telling me about my ferrets. That's totally normal to bring in public. Don't <laughs> ask me about my ferrets. I'm a human being. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm back to Saw, I guess. And the Saw, like... The Jigsaw Killer is kind of, he's killing before we're kind of introduced to uh, Dr. Uh, Carrie Elwes. I don't I'm not going to know his name. Dr. Gordon. Dr. Gordon. Uh, but so like, we, he, it's kind of a thing that's happening and they think he could be the killer. Yeah, because Dr. Gordon is like, I think I know who it is. I think it's the Jigsaw Killer. So then we go back, we, we see all the police investigation of the guy in the cage. And then you also see a guy who set himself on fire which I don't know how you win that game where, yeah. again, we put a slow acting poison in your body. It's like, God, how, did you get a discount on the poison? <laughs> I made a big batch of it. <laughs> it will spoil if I don't put it in you. <laughs> I just don't know how you win that game. He's got a slow acting poison. There is, there's 
uh, antidote in a safe, but there's numbers all over the wall to find out where it is. And he has only a candle to look through, but he's covered in a flammable jelly and there's glass on the floor. Like Jigsaw, you are setting this man up to fail. Yeah, and a lot of these throughout the whole series are like, I, I think it's, uh, I, you know, we're talking out of movie right now, but Saw 2, the guy's got the key buried behind his eye. And I just told producer wife, I was like, well, guess I'm going to die. <laughs> like, I'm not going to yeah, dig I mean, out my own eye. These are, I. some of the traps in later movies are by design unwinnable. Yeah. Some of the movies, some of the traps in the second and third one are winnable. If you just know how to like win. I just don't know how glass on the floor and like numbers everywhere. How do you find the combination? Like what is like, there has to be some kind of secret, but the, instead this dude just like got on fire. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also, you're, you're already nervous because you woke up out of, you know, being knocked out. And then also this guy just gave you a spiel on a tube TV. Uh, and then now go like nobody performs that w- that well under that kind of pressure. <laughs> and that guy was only in the trap because I guess he was stealing workman's comp. And it's like, who fucking cares? Yeah, that seems I, like- <laughs> uh, your whole life, Gavin, you've loved to jaywalk. <laughs> You've never actually followed the rules. <laughs> like now I need you to cut off your own dick. Like that's why? Like, that's like Saw 18. <laughs> like I I've seen you litter the floor with trash. Now you will litter the floor with your blood. Day after day you walk your dog and refuse <laughs> to pick up after him. Now today you are the dog. But who will <laughs> but who will pick up after you? <laughs> Uh, now take this shit. And... <laughs> um, I'm doing something with a bathroom, so if you could just pile that shit up, uh, I'm gonna. I also like the thought of John Kramer like sitting at a computer on Audacity, like recording these, and then like, let me get that voice <laughs> modulation just right. <laughs> I want to hear the take t- that that don't make the tape. God <laughs> damn it! I want to <laughs> like you know that Casey Kasem meltdown on YouTube where he's like, we can't come out of an up tempo record. And dedicate it to a dead dog. <laughs> I want to hear John Kramer do that. You know, his Bill O'Reilly fuck it, we'll do it live. We'll do it live. We'll I'll do, it, do live. it live. Listen, you mic that fucking puppet. I'll feed the lines in through it. Okay, <laughs> we're going off script. <laughs> mic that fucking puppet. <laughs> Uh, so they they think uh, Doctor uh, Gordon has done it, and they're like, "You give you, we'll give you a ride downtown," because for some reason the, the doc the guy's wife has the car today. You're a doctor. <laughs> also, it's the most circumstantial evidence. It's like yeah. we found a pin light with your name on it. He could have been like, "I have several of these." Yeah, What's you know what thing? a real murderer wouldn't do is get all his info printed up on a pin <laughs> and then leave it at the crime scene. The calls the pin lights, the wet bandits, the pin <laughs> bandits. Yeah, it's the most circumstantial evidence. And then they interview him. Then they bring in what I think is the second most iconic scene in the movie where they're interviewing Dr. Gordon. Then they bring in Amanda mm-hmm. and just let this stranger over here <laughs> like from, from see the through the window. Like, and then <laughs> Danny Glover's like, go tell your story. Yeah. And she's you, she's wearing the reverse bear trap. Yeah, and what do you think about the reverse bear trap? I think Lisa needs braces. Dental plan. <laughs> Dental plan. <laughs> Did you think that too? I didn't think that, but when when you said it, I mean, I love Lisa needs braces. Dental plan. I just think how heavy that is on her head. Yeah, like, just to I, have a whole thing that could like collapse your face, like. I just imagine, I think it was from the TV show, The Critic. Do you remember the kids who had the Easter Island heads? Yeah, where their heads are so big, they can't hold them up. It's like tipped over. It's like, she's, she's a very tiny girl. The fact that she can like move her neck at all to do any of the game is amazing. So good yeah. on her for having that neck strength. But that is a cool looking trap. Yes. So they actually filmed as like a test as like a proof of concept they lee one l put the bear trap on because they made the puppet first and they made the reverse bear trap first and they actually shot like a proof of concept short film with just the bear trap uh trap mm-hmm. and the studios lie liked it so much they greenlit the rest of the movie so they basically had to write a movie around this bear trap scene yeah 
Uh, yeah, and it's one of those. If it, you know, if you know, kind of know the series, you you remember the bear trap head thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got the the drill chair in the warehouse when they almost catch uh, uh, yeah. uh j- jigsaw. Yeah, you do have the the, the drill chair, which. There's a few, I feel like there's a lot of collateral damage in this movie. Like that guy is just sitting in that chair for a while. Same, yeah. same, same thing with an Amanda's trap with the reverse bear trap. She has to get this trap off her head uh, within like, again, 60 seconds mm-hmm. um, or else it's going to like bust her head open, like prior jaw open. It's, it's going to be a whole thing. And she sees like a guy on the floor and that guy on the floor had nothing to do with any of it he's just a guy on the floor yeah but you gotta dig through him like a pinata <laughs> and she thinks he's a dead guy but how does that guy win the game does he like not like, yeah sorry man you're just gonna <laughs> die so he, she cuts him open and like digs through his guts i think that's a very gross scene where she like digs through the guts and like finds the key in his stomach mm-hmm. and unlocks it but she still killed a dude um not also like also like John Kramer can weld and and owns a warehouse and do video edit and also now he's performing surgery on people like this this dude knows so many things clearly he has lived life <laughs> <laughs> he knows what he's doing and in the later movies they do kind of go into his backstory a little bit and mm-hmm. i think he may have had like real estate or something in his background which explains why he has access to all these warehouses now that i think about it yeah but Still, he's making people swallow keys. He's putting keys behind people's eyes. He's mm-hmm. <laughs> racking people up on torture machines. It's like he has that's a man who loves his work. It's behind your ear. <laughs> it's a quarter. No, it's a <laughs> it's another saw. It's a bear trap. Uh so I think that is just a really cool scene. And I think that the movie does not work without the reverse bear trap scene mm-hmm. because it really sets the, the tone for most of the traps that would come after it because the reverse bear trap has very high stakes Yeah. because I mean, your head can pop open. Mm -hmm. So in each sequel, you have to have the traps more elaborate, bigger, Mm badder, more violent. And I think the reverse bear trap sets all that in motion. Well, and also Amanda actually getting out of the trap shows that like, yeah, this guy is willing to kill you, but also, He's let it. He's he's willing to let you go and actually learn the lesson he's trying to teach you. And you know, Jigsaw was so excited when she won, and he's like, "I can send the puppet out now. All this audio <laughs> I've been recording, all this winter audio I've not gotten to use." Yeah, you know, Billy the puppet's wearing the T-shirt of the Super Bowl team that didn't win, <laughs> and he's like, "Stay back, stay back." <laughs> We're shipping those to Uganda. Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you cut to Uganda, it's just a bunch of kids wearing, sorry, Amanda shirts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, the two detectives are, uh, you know, uh, Danny Glover is obsessed with all this stuff. Yeah, he has, has to find it out. He's watching footage day in, day out, just the grainiest footage, trying to mm-hmm. listen to anything. And I love these eureka moments where they're like i know where that's at that's graffiti from the from whatever from, from, territory yeah from the hip-hop gang down the streets you know mm-hmm. the hip-hop gang then mm-hmm. they're like wait a second what a and i hear an alarm going off we need to find an alarm going off near this hip-hop gang territory yeah that's a lot of research to do yeah and then they find like we found one there was a, a police alarm right here on this night well, let's go. And I love that Danny Glover still is a little bit of his lethal weapon character because he's like, do we have enough time time to get a warrant? And he's like, who said anything about a warrant? I've never and, seen Lethal Weapon, but I've seen enough of those cop movies where they're like, warrant be damned. Let's go get him. And I'm sitting here going like, they let a child murderer off on a technicality uh, because it was, something was not done correctly. You should get a warrant, guys. You yeah, maybe get, be. May, maybe get some backup. Maybe uh, that's maybe how just, we got Freddy Krueger. Exactly, exactly. That child murderer. Murderer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then eventually, uh, Danny Glover's partner is taken out by the shotgun tripwire, which is a pretty cool kill. Yeah, this movie is not very bloody. Uh, surprisingly, and that's not an elaborate deal. Usually, it's a it's a Rube Goldberg machine to 
to make you die. It's just this one is trip over the wire. You get shot, you know? Yeah. It's something that a man with cancer could build. Yeah. This is Kevin McAllister. Yes. This is Kevin McAllister. This is my house and I've got to defend it. Yeah. Let's just, play a game. Yeah. Richard I, fracking, rigger, racking, like <laughs> Joe Pesci swearing. There, there is that moment where he's about to step on the trip wire and you pan up to, to the shotguns. And I think not showing his head explode Dawn of the Dead style really does add to it because it gives mm-hmm. you such a you're going to imagine something way worse than anything that you would yeah. see. It's it's you could show the monster or you could just show a little bit of the monster and we'll fill in the blanks. Yeah, it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, essentially, basically. And I do like the way that the shotgun goes off and just blood just drops down. I think that's a really cool and effective way to show mm-hmm. him if you don't have a large budget. So the budget of the movie is, uh, what was it, $700,000, and at the box office it made $18 million. So I think they said, I read, that that Monday they had a sequel greenlit. Oh, absolutely, because that's why there were so many sequels, because they're cheap to make and they would always turn a profit. People don't respect horror as a genre they think they're not very artistic and whatnot but they always make money because they're cheap they're a very low risk investment Mm -hmm. you just get some fake blood a hockey mask put some people on there get killed that's cheap to do it's not like you're making the godfather where you have to make a perfect replica of of the 1930s yeah and then and then we jump to uh later in the movie we we get uh, benjamin linus uh, shown uh, being <laughs> being kind of Jigsaw before we see who Jigsaw actually is. Yeah, there's a whole thing with Zepp the orderly uh, actually sticking up for his John name is Cr- John. His name is John. He's actually a very interesting person. And it's <laughs> like, and you you can see Doctor Gordon in his mind make the make the wink and toss motion, like some yeah. of the like oh whatever this guy. Some of the orderlies bond with the patients on a different level. It's like, okay, like people like, yeah, it's, they have empathy. That's crazy. And then there's a, a plot with was Dr. Gordon cheating on his wife? I mean, he goes to the hotel to, to break it off or whatever he was doing. Who knows if, cause he's like, I didn't cheat on her. You know, <laughs> I, I just don't know why you would go. If, if you, if you've never cheated or you're, thinking about cheating or you're not going to cheat why would you go to meet up with somebody and be like i'm not cheating like not tonight also if somebody calls for you while you're cheating say you're not there that's don't say anything because they're like she answers the phone his uh, his little intern nurse play thing whatever uh she's like hello it's for you and he's like oh well i better take this like no you don't no yeah. you, like just go away dr also, gordon also how is everywhere in the movie the shittiest place you've ever seen yes i was so confused at first because he said he was at the hospital and me and uh my, my girlfriend were like this is the worst hospital parking garage <laughs> yeah. i've ever seen like why is there graffiti from the hip-hop gang on the walls and they they love going back to this shitty. It's like if Jay Leno abandoned a garage on his property. Like it's yeah. so. It's, it doesn't even look like a place to. It, it's a barn, kind of. Eh, we uh, we we don't go over there, folks. <laughs> Mavis, my wife, you know, she's like Jay. You gotta get in the house. Headlines. <laughs> Headline. And Lee Wan L just lives in like the shittiest, like apartment imaginable. <laughs> And like that you you walk in you don't want to like sit anywhere you're like no nah, i'm good i'll just stand for the whole visit <laughs> i'll just stand no leaning either no yeah so, i don't want to drink out of anything you have <laughs> yeah everything is very shitty even dr gordon's house is just really weird looking because they filmed this whole movie in a warehouse that's that's where you get no windows it's very much like a casino <laughs> like <laughs> They don't want you to know what time it is. <laughs> Have we been here for an hour? We've been here for four days. Yeah. There's a few, you know, you get shots of Benjamin Linus out of the window and Danny Glover looking out of a window. And you, There are windows, but for the most part, it's like, oh, there's a lot of curtains over on there because that's a, just a brick wall. This, this is a, there's a comedy condo that I stay in once a year where it's inside of kind of a, like next to the club in like a warehouse setting and there are no windows 
And I told producer wife, I'm like, this is like staying at this condo. You're just missing like tube TVs and tables from the club. <laughs> oh, I wonder if you explore the condo, if you just open like one door, you're like, oh, I'm in the saw bathroom. This yeah. is, this is a, there's Dr. Gordon. i hello. Oh, yeah. uh, do you want some comps, some drink tickets? <laughs> like, 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 what do you want? You might, might have to run my set by you real fast. Yeah. We're gonna, I got to run my new hour. Is that cool? Do you, are you cool with that? And, and we, and, you know, periodically we cut back to the bathroom with Lee Wanell and, uh, and uh, what's his dick, uh, Dr. Gordon. <laughs> um, and it, it's, there are tactics in this movie that we see throughout the series of the tape recorder and uh, just X marks the spot type stuff. It's kind of like, what, what came first did saw come first or or like escape rooms was that a I, thing before i think saw may have predated escape rooms i think escape rooms didn't really come to prominence until probably like early 2010s mid 2010s somewhere mm-hmm. around there um i'm not a fan of escape rooms i don't enjoy them um uh, it's not i don't think not- i've ever been to one but th- that's also that that doesn't seem like fun to me, you know. Yeah, I, I did one at one time as like a work bonding trip, and I was like, I don't want to spend, I don't want to be trapped with my actual coworkers. Yeah, that's uh, called work. Yeah, my favorite part about this escape room we did because we were there to like promote it because it was back when I was in radio, and in an escape room you're supposed to be like locked in, but it was just like an office building where they just like you're in this you're in the asylum, and it was just like an office. And they told us, like, if you need to use the bathroom, like, you can leave. It's like, this this ain't a fucking escape room. This is just a room with some shit in it that I have to solve. Well, they said that because one guy took a shit in the corner. He's like, (laughs) I I follow the rules around here. (laughs) And that's how Saw started, was a guy took a shit somewhere. And I was like, I had to dig through this dookie for a key. Uh, Is that part of it? He's like, no. Gavin, that's not even, yeah. that's (laughs) Guy just ate a key. Because this very much uh, escape room, and then later we get the the movie. I don't know if it's a franchise. I think there's two of them, but escape room. Yes, I would be, uh, and I, I think it's. I think we're past the point of spoilers at this point. But John Kramer's in the middle of the room the entire time. Yeah, how frustrating is it for him to have them not figuring out these puzzles? Yeah, turn the lights off or whatever. You know, <laughs> he's like, God, they're still on the first clue. And did does it is this stated in the movie that he took something to slow his heart to make him not move, or does he just not move? I think it's maybe retconned in later movies that he like takes thing and lays down. Okay, but yeah, I was like, this dude is just real still. Like if he farts, the whole thing's off. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah he's like his foot itches. He's like, my, I, I would blow the whole thing with just like itching my foot with my other foot. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, did that guy just move? <laughs> no, it's a death twitch. I'm a doctor. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, we get the back and forth and Lee wanell has got to reach in the, the toilet, which uh, uh, he reaches in the toilet and there's nothing, <laughs> but it's the grossest looking thing. And then I, mean, I would have looked in the back of the toilet immediately. Anything to not reach in where you put I would have just never reached in the toilet. I would have never. I guess would have I'll never... die. This this movie is that meme of the guy that he's like, guess I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, there's a, there's a scene in the video game Silent Hill 2 where you have to like find a wallet in a, in a, in a dirty bathroom in like the Silent Hill high school. Mm-hmm. And like James Sunderland, he just like, it's like press X to place hand and you're like, he's just like, okay. And like, it's yeah. unfazed by it. You're like, I just, what? No, you, I know you're not a real person. I need you to feel this. Could you just pull out a wallet? Yeah. I, I don't want to stick my hand in the toilet that I have at my house, let alone a public, everybody poops here. No, thank you. <laughs> and nobody's flushing. If it's, <laughs> if it's yellow, it's mellow. If it's yeah. brown, also don't flush it yeah, down. Yeah, let it mellow. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a thing here, guys. And then uh, I I don't know where where we're like there's this movie kind of jumps around a little bit. We get the cell phone, yeah, uh, that was in the wall. With uh, we got the cell phone that in, in the wall because X marks the spot, but he immediately it's like it can only receive calls, which I don't know how you set up a cell phone to only receive calls. Uh, it's the same way you clone a cell phone in the movie Scream, Gavin. <laughs> they must have cloned a cellular telephone. Uh, he does find the saws, though, the uh, titular saw. 
yeah from and they immediately like start trying to saw off the chains and they're like mm -hmm. he doesn't want to saw he doesn't want us to saw through our chain he wants us to saw through our feet and you're like oh but that's gonna happen yeah well and uh chains that are also electrified somehow like I, by where, a remote <laughs> where's the battery for this like this john kramer has a lot of has just has i really marvel at his ingenuity to be like what if they start acting like bitches? How can yeah. I get them back on track? They must have cloned this electrified chain. <laughs> that pipe is pure electricity. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I don't know. I I just want to talk about the where he saws his foot off. <laughs> okay, well, okay, I'll give the real clip note. He tries to trick it because Zeb wants Dr. Gordon to kill Adam. Like that's the whole thing, like kill Adam yeah. or I'll kill your family yeah we should have just said that beginning we didn't even talk about that that's yeah. the whole plot is it's a whole kill the other. you you've seen the movie you know uh, yeah <laughs> i like the way we're doing a podcast about this we're like whatever you know you know the part <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're, we're just hand waving it <laughs> um and then dr gordon tries to be like i'm gonna give you a poison cigarette again with the poison yeah and you have uh adam doing the worst like Shakespeare in the park death scene he could possibly muster. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's when he gets shocked. And there and Jigsaw's like, no, I, I, I see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Uh this isn't gonna work. I've done it. <laughs> could uh Carrie Elwes been any less convinced convincing? Like, I've done it. I have killed him. He is no more. From the ground he will return. Like, yeah. What? So then everything go goes crazy D uh danny glover shows up big whole fight with like the family goes down and then the phone he starts ringing to dr gordon it's his uh car's extended warranty <laughs> <laughs> what a, yeah the, it's uh, the one phone that hasn't reached telemarketers yet <laughs> and they're like hey yeah are you in a bathroom right now listen we're calling about your car's extended yeah. warranty. We know you only have one and you like to park it in the worst places. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're going to need you're this. Definitely going to want this warranty and this life insurance, the way things are going. But you've been building to this the whole point. The phone's ringing. Dr. Gordon has so many options to retrieve that phone. He could have used a shirt. He mm -hmm. could have used this saw to just reach and grab the phone. Yeah. But, but Brent, what does he do? Take us home. He uh he's got to save his family because Danny Glover has been playing Rear Window the whole <laughs> movie, uh, and his family needs him. So he he bites down on that shirt that he could have used to get the phone, and he saws his own foot off with in front of in front of another person. And I thought, like, I watched the uncut version of this. I I have the uncut version on DVD. And there is maybe a, a second extra of him cutting his foot off. And it's not very graphic at all. Yeah. And I, I don't know if it's where we've seen a bunch of horror stuff and we de were desensitized or, you know, I think, you know, cutting your own foot off is pretty graphic, but that, you know, compared to the, the rest of the franchise, like nightmare on Elm street is more bloody than this movie. Yeah, and I think it took away the magic because all they did was they took a dull saw and it had like a blood tube in it. Mm -hmm. So when he's sawing it, he's just squeezing like a little blood bladder and it's like just spraying blood on him. It's just okay. really moving. So there's nothing actually like going into his foot. Like that's his foot. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it's giving the illusion that that's going in, but it, but it's really not. It's just moving blood around for the effect. Um, you never see the foot. You never see the foot come off. All you see is the aftermath of him slowly becoming a zombie he's like he's he's losing color quick yeah and he didn't know. tell anybody he got bit <laughs> no i'm okay i'm just sweating a lot i'm, I'm good I, I i think you would lose some color but was that like was, was all the blood in him like just in that foot i mean he's a doctor so he did like tie the shirt off to like make a tourniquet but i don't know how good a shirt is gonna do like the that kind of job you know so but he he's turning throughout the whole movie he's turning colors you know yeah he loses he, he does not handle well under pressure he's getting ready for, a, he, for being a doctor you know i know <laughs> i i would not want him doing surgery on me no at, at here the bite first... this shirt oh what <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> If he hears a phone in the OR, like he's going to do whatever it takes. 
Yeah. Like, I got to get to that phone. He's going to, like, just cut you in half and move the body apart. <laughs> but I got to get that phone. I'm like, doctor, we could have got it for you. you My just family needs around me. The guy. <laughs> My family needs me. <laughs> um, and can you, like, imagine, like, cutting your own foot off, but then also to be Lee Wan L's character on the other side of the room, <laughs> watching a man cut his own foot off. It's, yeah, because <laughs> I think that that's what makes it seem so good is you – you know he's cutting the foot off and just getting the, the reactions of Lee Wanell being like, no, I stop. What, what are you what? doing? What? My God. I have the bathtub drain. There's so much you could be using to get the phone right now. <laughs> yeah, like as somebody who's dropped the remote a little farther from the couch than he wants to get up, <laughs> like you'll find any way to just use the pillow or <laughs> like I've been training for this moment my whole life. Like I have so many things. Like if I need to get a shirt or a cup or use my cat to get, to, to get something, but I'm not gonna cut my foot off. Be like, well, guess yeah. I'm not answering that. You're talking to a guy who's taken his uh, underwear off, but then picked it up with his foot, so he doesn't <laughs> have to bend down. I'll find a way. Life uh, finds a way. It just uh, he. I think he wanted to cut off his foot. I think he had. A, he's needed an excuse. He's needed a yeah. reason to cut off his foot. Yeah, some you know some people want to get a piercing. This guy's like, you know what? Let's chop it, chop let's, it off. Let's cut my foot off right now. And then <laughs> I love that Doctor Gordon crawls over. He's like, I just, I'll, I'll go, I'll, I'll go yeah. get help for you. I'll go. <laughs> well, he shoots that. He shoots him first. He does shoot him first. He's like, I have to do it for my family. And I can think <laughs> of nothing worse than having this zombie man <laughs> aiming a gun at me. Yeah, guy that's clearly bleeding out that won't make it out of the building. And I'm shot on top of this guy not making it out. And he's like, but I, I'm sorry. Because Zeb comes into the bathroom. They 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 beat him with the tank lid, which is another pretty brutal kill. That is a good kill with him. Yeah. I don't know if that's been in a movie. I'm sure it has. But the back of the toilet, that's a pretty solid melee weapon. <laughs> it, you get at least, at least a plus three to yeah. your strength if, you, if you're hitting somebody with it, especially in a downward motion. <laughs> also, so, can we talk about this high speed chase from uh, the <laughs> Dr. Gordon's house to the warehouse? It uh, is, it's them in their car going vroom, 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 vroom. Like, <laughs> like for a low budget chase. I really like how they did it because it's, you know, then you could have, couldn't have just had a chase, you know, I, I know it's low budget, so it didn't really it, either. It's because of a low budget, which it was, or it's like, oh, this director's got style, you know, <laughs> like all they did for this car chase because they could not afford to shoot a car chase. Vroom, put, vroom, 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 vroom. <laughs> basically, the cars are stationary <laughs> and there are people on each side, like rocking it back and forth. And they're just like running a light by it very quickly. So it yeah. looks like it's driving and just like zooming in and re real fast. That car is not moving. But they're no. like, Dan, like Danny Glover, make vroom vroom noises like you're Lightning McQueen, <laughs> and, and you're gonna catch up in time. Uh, yeah, that was a highlight of the movie for me. Was that car chase? Oh, so good. And then, <laughs> I like that they got there at the same time too. E even pulling up to the building was so weird. Like you have a budget to park a car in front of a building. Yeah, yeah. And now he's limping. And why not just wait for Danny Glover to the walk through the door and then shoot him? Like, <laughs> Nope, gotta have this standoff. Yeah, I, but yeah, having get, getting shot by Doctor Gordon, then having him breathily tell you like he's about to blow up Cyberdyne, just like <laughs> I, I'll, I'll go get help. For you. <laughs> <laughs> like you're not gonna make it down the hallway, Doctor. No, Gordon. you're you're a ghost. Yeah, and literally <laughs> and figuratively. And then you have the big reveal of this movie that really sets Saw apart from mm -hmm. everything is that guy getting up off the floor and it's it's because he's he gets up and the music strikes and i forgot that lee wanell sees him get up mm -hmm. i thought something happened to him and then the guy gets up but he gets up he try he's almost shot by lee wanell and he he gets electrocuted and he's like the key to that lock is in the tub and i'd be like god damn it this Again, whole time yeah but it went down the drain it goes down the drain so he can't retreat like that's not fair what what's he supposed to do just be like wake up be like, hope there is there a key yeah is there, is there a key in the darkness here but he he rips the makeup off uh what a what a reveal this i don't i'd have to think about huge reveals and movies but this could be one of them yeah 
And I want to cover Saw 2 at some point. I really like the reveal at the end of Saw 2 as well. Um, I don't remember it. I didn't finish the movie last night. So. Well, I, I'm not going to ruin it for you. Okay. Uh, but it, I think that's a very good one, too, because that once you have like a big twist like that, you have to keep doing big twists because the, yeah. the fans expect you to, 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 to live M. up Night to that. Shyamalan. M. Night Shyamalan. What a twist. <laughs> And I, I think it's great. He gets off the floor. They have, they have a whole ass conversation. He's like, you know, the keys in there. And then the score to saw is incredible. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love it. It's such a good song. And mm-hmm. it really, like, if you hear that, you know, exactly what you are, you know, exactly what movie you are hearing a soundtrack from. Yeah. And then also I was watching last night and like, there are a lot of moments in saw the whole franchise that like if he would have shut that door and then you heard oh wow come on get up get down with it like that's such a 2000s thing to happen where i'm like yes of course down with the sickness is gonna hit <laughs> did you ever see ghost ship yeah yeah Go- i think we may have talk- talked about it somewhere but on the ghost openings ship- the best opening movie openings on the field yeah podcast. But, and we also referenced uh how much mud vein is in that yeah. movie <laughs> like if you would have shut that door and been like Durg, everything <laughs> this be like yeah that makes yeah that yeah tracks. total sense yeah i love it love that but yeah the the door slam game over being the last line of the movie and just mm-hmm. hearing adam scream perfect ending so good and sets up perfectly for a sequel. And it's, uh, I don't know that it was on purpose, but it's kind of rem- reminiscent of Leatherface shutting that door. Yes. I don't yeah. I don't think that was their plan, but it's like when there's a door shut like that, that's such a, a, like a final thing to it. Uh, what a great ending, you know? Yeah. And whenever I, actually, whenever I, in my office, there is a sliding pocket door. And whenever I close the door, a part of my brain two goes, hands a part of my my, my brain goes game over <laughs> <laughs> as i like shut the door because it's such an iconic scene uh i i didn't mention uh the with the robe that uh jigsaw is wearing throughout the movie uh just well, i did mention you know you just wear that robe with the hood up by yourself alone <laughs> but then also it's got knives in it it's a knife robe like yeah, he's I, like like Assassin's Creed over here. He's just got like the spring loaded blade because he cut Danny Glover's throat. And good on Danny Glover for surviving getting his throat cut. Yeah, he just couldn't survive a gunshot. <laughs> now, what what do you make of, I've heard people say this, of like the torture porn era was kind of runs uh, uh, right along with like the Iraq War and the Guantanamo Bay. Do you think? Cause I I'm a believer that horror kind of reflects what's going on in the world. Do you, would you see, like, think of like the movies were so brutal, but also this was a time when we were seeing war and people getting tortured and beheading videos. Like what a, that I, that was my young internet experience was like being on like weezer.com while a beheading video loaded on the next tab it's like i like, love hitting up neopets and rotten.com yeah, yeah like <laughs> do you do you subscribe to that that these kind of movies were a reflection of all the brutal shit that was happening i don't i, I don't think i've ever put that together but i think there's definitely something there and i I just think... the 9 11. What when did this movie come out? 2004 or whatever? Yeah, so we're three years removed from 9 11. We, we we saw ta- the planes hit the towers, and there's no mistake, some yeah. people died. It was brutal, you know? Like, yeah, and I think that's when I knew we were healing as a country because I was like, okay, now we can watch a man h- h- cut, cut his foot off again. Yeah, we can <laughs> watch Robin Hood uh, cut his own foot off. <laughs> that's a really good case and a good point to bring up because yeah because each movie got meaner and yeah. more violent where like the the last one of the main series that wasn't a prequel or this weird chris rock movie was in 3d mm-hmm. so it's like whoa look at the guts coming right for you look at them yeah which is such a weird gimmick for i know they did it with like friday the 13th but this is jaws like, jaws but you have like the digitized 3d where it's just like look at the body parts coming towards you we 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 like this right yeah it's a foot coming your you know <laughs> yeah it, like so much brutal. of this movie is metal 
it's like uh in in like uh an industrial warehouse type deal and i think part of that was the budget constraints but like there's no soft edges to the to these movies you know it's real pittsburgh steel daddy just it is like Mm, somebody had to go to a forge to make this movie (laughs) yeah like everything in that bathroom this even if you're not cutting off your own foot you could get tetanus everything is yeah. dirty and rusty and i in re-watching this i was just looking down before dr garden cut off his foot but he's like his feet are dirty it's on that grimy floor for it's like I'm, you're shitting in a subway <laughs> yeah i'm very i'm very much a princess a lot of my friends do like spartan races yeah and i was, I was like i don't want to do that because i don't want to get my, my my socks wet no no okay i don't i don't want to do that i don't want to get trench foot okay i'm a princess <laughs> but so whenever i see a, one of these horror movies that's like really dirty and grimy like this i was like i would just Ugh. die because i'd be like do i have any purell uh, yeah is, is there anything in here that i could just like <laughs> maybe feel a little bit clean guess i'll die <laughs> basically um for you are you a fan of this particular genre of movie or do you like other genres better i i this is not my favorite, but I don't hate this. And I, I really, I enjoy, I think the whodunit mystery aspect more than like to see some guy work out a Rubik's cube essentially on his face, you know? Yeah. Um, I like the, the more whodunit aspect of it. Yeah. And I think that two is my favorite. I think two carries over the, the most from the original in mm-hmm. keeping the spirit. I think later on they, they do get too elaborate and too just about the traps and not about story anymore. And the yeah. story gets very convoluted with, with people double crossing everybody and like, who's the new jigsaw and whatnot. Yeah. But this original one is a, it's a solid movie. I don't think it's as good as something like seven, mm-hmm. uh, which, it, which is just a phenomenal movie all around. Um, Watson the box Jane Doe mm-hmm. um, John Doe has the upper hand now just a great but I but Saw is just a solid thriller and if you just watch this one and none other I think you have a different opinion about the series as a whole because you're like oh it's a good movie and yeah. you and you you can just appreciate it as a standalone yeah you could say that with so many uh, franchises of oh the the first one was great but then it loses its yeah. allure as it's it, away from the creator's hands and more about the money you know yeah absolutely but overall i love as you can tell by me talking so much during this episode mm-hmm. um i love the saw series i it's one of my favorites it, it was just such a part of my life for seven years mm-hmm. uh, and just looking forward to the next one the first honest to god the first horror figure i ever bought was a NECA jigsaw yeah and that's what started my horror figure collecting was because mm-hmm. I wanted to buy a jigsaw figure. Um, I guess uh, our th- th- things we like to touch on every episode. What was your favorite kill? Uh, favorite kill for me. That's, it's weird there's not I... a lot of kills in here. You no. Know? Um, I guess the shotgun kill. I guess the shotgun is probably my favorite because it is an actual kill that's on screen. Yeah. There's the shotgun and then there's the drill guy that gets it. Does the drill guy get killed though? I think they save him. Oh, I know. That's the I watched it last night. That's a, yeah. I guess it would be the shotgun guy. Yeah. But uh, the, shot- even more than the kill, there's a, a kill. That's not a kill. Uh, was the this just he him sawing his foot off like that's more shocking than the guy you know getting shot by a shotgun. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the foot thing is probably my oh shit moment. I think okay. that's I, I think that's a my oh shit moment. Where it's like he's he's sawing off his foot. Yeah, and it, I think we should get Jim Ross to do commentary. <laughs> my God, he sawed his own foot off. <laughs> his foot is broken in half. <laughs> Somebody stop the damn game. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you like Saw, what kind of movies would you recommend? Oh, can I do my oh shit move moment? Oh, I'm or sorry. Are we just I'm gonna sorry. I'm sorry. I thought it was the foot too. I'm sorry. Foot, ste- well, it would have been the foot. Uh, it's so rare, I think, to have a two oh shit moments back to back that close. But it would have been the foot, and it might still be. But also him getting up at the end. Yeah because he's dead and that that really sets off the series and and i i hope it's not a spoiler but i think it's a big mistake to get rid of jigsaw yeah john kramer 
Yes, but then uh, you get rid of him, but then have to write him into four more movies. Of course, and uh, <laughs> that's where I that pre-planning really comes in handy. Have you seen that meme that's going around that says, uh, "Back in Saw Six, they didn't have de-aging technology, so they just uh, de-aged John Kramer by having him wear a backwards hat." And yeah, have that's a one patch. of the most outlandish moments. He's just wearing a hat. <laughs> Hello, fellow torture villains. Hello. <laughs> I'm here at the local clinic. <laughs> and also his voice tobin bell is up there with the best horror voices there's him there's uh tony todd mm -hmm. has a great voice for you know acting in general but in the horror genre for sure and i met tobin bell i got my photo with him he signed my saw two poster lovely man very very nice now did he seem like he wanted to be there because He's done a lot of stuff. I think he was on the Sopranos. So yeah, I, I forgot. That's another Sopranos. He was the, uh, like the general at the boarding school. They're going to send AJ to. That's right. He is. Yeah. So that's three, uh, Sopranos references or two. I don't remember either way. Um, so he seemed like happy to be jigsaw. Like I, that's what we all kind of know him from, you know? Yeah. He was very nice. He, he was nice. He was, he's an older guy. So he's probably, a little tired. I wonder um, how old uh, Tobin Bell is. I think he's maybe in his seventies. He oh. is uh, eighty. Wow. Oh yeah. So he's getting up there, and we're got to put him in a lot of backwards hats to DH him. <laughs> um, but he was super nice. He wasn't. He wasn't rude. I did have somebody go up before me. I always hate when I'm at a con and somebody in front of me makes it weird for me to and like. That, me. Now you got to be the next guy. Yeah, after the like, weird thing. Like somebody in front of me was just like, I just want to say hi to him, and I was like, well, he ain't here to say hi. He's here to make that money. <laughs> like, yeah, he's here to make money. You know. But but he was like, hi. I just really want to say I enjoyed it. He's like, okay, thank you, thank bye. you very much. And then he, he, he kind of lingered. And he's like, okay. And I was like, huh. all right, cool. Uh, yeah. What's up, Tom? I actually gave you money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was buy like, an eight by ten. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he signed my poster in like a red paint pen, and he was he came like, oh, that looks real good. I was like, thanks. And he took a photo, and he was very he was, he was very nice. Good. I, you know. He's there. He's mayor making money, but it's also there. Are, you've you've had experiences and other people had over like, man, I just gave this guy money and he's an asshole. Great. Hey, listen, you know? everybody, everybody talks about what a great guy Kane Hodder is. Not fucking me. He <laughs> is not. a. I will die on that hill. I don't until I have a better interaction. I will forever be like Kane Hodder was a dick to me and I will not let it go. Well, we just lost a listener, Gavin. That's great. <laughs> Good. Fantastic. Kane Hodder. Uh, yes. I get, so we, let's, uh, movies that you would recommend. You said seven. I had seven on my list. Um, uh, you brought one up, The Collector. Mm-hmm. Uh, and The Collection. Um, mm -hmm. they're allegedly maybe going to make The Collected, which is the third movie, which was halfway done when the pandemic started. And then it's kind of got abandoned. But, uh, Darren Lynn Bosman, who did Saws two through four, created the collected series the, okay. the collector series and then also i mean hostile hostile's the one as well yeah i would also say if you're uh in it for more like the whodunit the thriller we've already talked about it on this on this uh podcast but uh scream is a good whodunit mm -hmm. um uh, friday the 13th part one is a good whodunit um and i yeah i think i think it, the rest of the saw series in general it, yeah you know what have you got to lose with watching the rest of them i know? mean if you're if you're on board for saw one and you're the kind of person who would watch like saw two and three watch all of them mm -hmm. they all have their moments just just to see how fucking stupid they get <laughs> and if you want to watch eddie winslow get shotgun carousel and yeah. deal with the health the, the the insurance premiums or whatever they were mad about in that one yeah well the thing is i do, i can't disagree with the that movie <laughs> like yeah i'm like yeah it is too high and people need their health care uh overall i love the saw series i hope that we can re revisit it further down the line mm -hmm. and uh but yeah i love the saw saw series it's my one of my favorites and i want to see what happens next uh, and I guess we also, we're going to start previewing uh, for next week, what we're going to watch, Gavin. So what are we watching? 
So next week, I'm really excited about this. This because, is a big departure from Saw to what we're about to watch. Yes, <laughs> we're watching a Serbian film. No, yeah. uh, no. It's Cannibal the, Holocaust. <laughs> the uncut version, and we will be masturbating the whole time. Yeah. Uh, Can you imagine yeah. if there was an unrated Cannibal Holocaust? Oh, God. I think that's just actual <laughs> surveillance footage of murders. Yeah, I think so. Um, so we are going, so up until this point, we've done only movies. Mm-hmm. We've done movies. Um, we are going to do a TV two-parter of something that was part of your childhood, my childhood. We mm-hmm. are doing the Haunted Mask Part 1 and 2, Goosebumps. I am so excited for this because I have not gone back to Goosebumps in a long time. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm excited to see the dog uh, that was in <laughs> Poltergeist. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I love Goosebumps. Was, Goosebumps was probably my first introduction to horror. I don't want to get too much into it now save it I, for the air gavin they, save it for the air but not this air the, the other one air that yeah. we're gonna do next week uh i'm so excited to talk about goosebumps the haunted mask part one and two so watch haunted mask part one and two and then join us next week when, when we talk about it yeah well gavin uh i'd like to thank you for being on the show thank you so much show. <laughs> thank you for <laughs> on this show we we create together thanks for having me as your guest on this thing that i equally have part Man, of it's, it's just great to have you on thanks for being on but uh uh gavin th- this has been uh saw and uh go uh tell your friend about the show go leave us a positive review on uh on wherever and you know s- screenshot you listening uh on your phone and say hey i'm listening to the the newest episode of they're coming to get you and tag us because at least that makes us feel a little bit better but also let your friends know there's a horror podcast out there that you should check out absolutely yeah tag us and stuff i'm at gavin eddings on uh twitter you're at brit tier mm-hmm. let us know that you're watching some people have already and uh we, we gotta show love to robin robin is like our biggest fan and robin richards what up, Robin? We love you. And we will eventually one day do some Stephen King stuff for you. Yes. Uh, we we promise. But I think that's it. Season two yeah. is off to a good start. They're coming to get you, Barbara. They're coming to get you. They're coming for you, Barbara. They're coming to get you, 